So this is urine therapy training course number 15, the final course number number five. And we're starting off with our Shivambu communion time, first of all. So may this holy water of holy waters, which has been passed down, the wisdom has been passed down, the practice has been passed down, and kept alive over thousands of years of recorded history uh, so that you and I and those to follow us will have the knowledge and the wisdom to be able to heal themselves with a water that's made by themselves in perfection for themselves. So we give thanks for the nectar of immortality, the water of life, that which uh, pours out in abundance when we need it, and it may bring us health and happiness today and the rest of our lives. So be it. Cheers. So be it. Mm. Uh, so the prayers I do, the prayers, the transmissions, the sat songs, the channeling, people call it something. Everybody calls it different. A channeling, a transmission, whatever it is. Um, they're not scripted. And when you start doing this, you probably already have. Uh, when it comes out, it amazes you what's being said. And if you have a chance to record and you play it back, it's surprising that you actually said that. So, so whatever that conscious dream is that comes through you, it's great to be able to uh, be aware of that. Yeah, I agree. So, <clears throat> before we get to the book, which you now have, and we will be popping in and out of different parts of the book, but the last of our class is going to start on page. Did I read what urine was by that guy? Yeah, we did. We I did the rap song. Yeah. So much for my rap ability. Okay. Um, we're going to review what we reviewed for the last four classes, and then we're going to get we're going to finish with two thirty four. Sounds good. So. <clears throat> I'm going to propose a couple of questions to you and mm -hmm. doing the best that you can, Hunter, with, do you want me to call you Hunter or Cyrene on this uh, class? You can just call me Hunter. It's hard. All right. So, so Hunter, I'm going to ask, propose a couple of questions to you, answer them to the best of your ability. Uh, and then I'll toss in a little extra content to fill it, fill it up. And then, then eventually we'll get to the book. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, what is your overall understanding of what some people call urine and other people call orin or shibambu? Can you give a brief understanding if you had to present this to someone new? Uh, what it what what is it? Well, the medical terminology for urine is actually blood plasma ultrafiltrate. So it's your blood ultrafiltrate. And mm -hmm. it's not actually a waste product. Um, one thing I, I still need to further understand is the bodily process of how it's not entirely a waste product. Like, I understand it isn't intuitively, but explaining that process, I need a little help with. Okay. And uh, uh, Go ahead. Yeah, you can go ahead, actually. All right. So there's three components to the blood which originate in the bone marrow. And that's the white blood, the white cells, the gold yellow plasma, and the red blood cells. Uh, when it gets uh, to the liver and its circulation through the body, when whatever else comes into the liver, the liver decides to send the plasma only to the kidneys for the kidneys filtration purification of it. It's sending it to be cleaned and purified not to be cleaned and eliminated, for one thing. So we have to change our whole understanding of how we reframe and approach the subject of the kidneys. And then after the kidneys takes the blood plasma, it has a very sophisticated chamber system known as the nephron, uh, spelled N-E-P-H-R-O-N. And these 1.2 million fil little filters, uh, they turn all that into uh, nutrients that have been identified as your, from your body as either what it needs or what it needs to design an antibody for because there was a threat or a, a compromise that's been discovered in the plasma. So after this is all filtered out, what you have left with is 4,690 identified elements 
that are key components in life life um, life nourishing uh, waters that are made for your body. That's a simple approach. Yeah, so those guys. Okay, um, and then what we do with it. Another way of looking at it, how we're changing our framing of our wordings is when people say, "Well, when you when you eliminate your isn't your isn't your urine being eliminated? Doesn't the kidneys eliminate it?" See, even that word implies there was some there was waste and they were taking out the trash. So we might look at it as the 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 kidneys are uh, making something for you, or designing, or providing for you uh, something that uh, would do you a lot of good. Okay. Yeah, that helps. All right. <clears throat> Next question. God, I just feel like I looped this the other day and went down to the beach. And what's neat at the beach is you can just take a couple steps and pee while you're standing up and nobody knows you're in the water, out of the water, and whatever is coming off of your suit. And at one point, I had a container like this that was all loaded with my evolving arm that's keeping the car. And I'm sitting in one of those beach chairs, just massaging myself all over the place. And nobody could tell because I had a little label around it. And if they looked at it, there's a lot of people who drink beer at the beach. They wouldn't know. So when you get used to doing this and it becomes built into your lifestyle, you're like a secret agent. Nobody knows what you're doing. And you're simply radiating health to people and they can have no clue why you look so good. You seem to have a lot of energy, Hunter. What are you doing? Well, sit down. We need to have a talk. <laughs> yeah. All right, next question. Can you review or describe any of the history of urine therapy, um, starting with the Damar Tantra and Shiva and his partner, Pavarti? Can you describe any moments in history uh, where urine was discussed or discovered or used in any form? Um, I don't remember the exact details of it, but I just remember you telling me about the story of Shiva and one of his followers asking him how he looks so young at his age. Mm -hmm. And he told him to drink of his own waters. Mm -hmm. Shiva told his devotee to drink of his own waters. Mm -hmm. um, that's about as much as I remember for the history. Okay. Uh, do you remember how uh, urine was used during the Roman period? No, I do not. Uh, they had public troughs where people would pee, and they had to pay tax on their urine, which it seems far-fetched, but today nothing seems far-fetched. And then they used the urine to either in the laundry industry to clean the clothes, they use it in the agricultural industry, and uh, they even might have used it in the, um, the medical industry, but there wasn't any records of that. And then moving forward, uh, Magellan, when he took his uh, men on long, long um, ship rides, he had them drink their water because the, the, they had the belief at the time that ocean water was not safe for the human body. So that was one time when they were drinking it. Uh, there were times when Lewis and Clark, uh, they went across the United States trailblazing and discovering things. And they found Native American men and women were bathing in their urine. I guess the only way they figured out was they got to get close to them. How else would they know what the water was, right? <laughs> so over over the over these different periods of time, um, we we have documentations. I've done a lot of research where it indicated it was used for various purposes, either in the agriculture purposes, the cleaning purposes, and then as as medicine started to advance. I have to use air quotes because we don't know if medicine ever advances. But as medicine started to advance, they started uh, discovering that one of the main ingredients is called urea. And urea is a thing that uh, it converts over a period of time and oxidizes into what's known as ammonia. But, and they both have healing properties, but uh, the urea <clears throat> was discovered to have beautifying effects on the skin, on the eyes, and the cheeks, and the hair, et cetera, et cetera. So in all their brilliance, these uh, medics worked with the scientists and discovered that they can make 
uh, urea in a way, I think most of it's synthetic, but there was a time where it was, it was real urine. You can see products out there on the market, beauty products like murine for eye drops. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Well, what happens if you separate the, the word M from your U-R-I-N-E, murine, you get M urine. Um, since I started doing Shivambu publicly and teaching and writing a lot, a lot of the community likes to send me memes and pictures and things they discover. And uh, they're sending more and more bottles and creams and lotions that have urea on the label so I can put it in my collection. Uh, and the, the industry is very clever because the bottom line when it comes to marketing and, and um, corporations is the dollar. So they have found a way that they could hide the word urine or urea in the labels uh, so that, that people will never know. Clever, huh? <clears throat> so the word carbamide, if you ever want to look that up, uh, I think I looked it up in Wikipedia, that's the scientific or the biological, I don't know what, that, I guess it's a scientific term for urea. So a lot of companies can hide urine in plain sight and nobody will know. And why do they hide it in plain sight? Because they don't want you to know. Uh, however, the gig is up. We found out that they've been lying to us. And I'm one of the big whistleblowers on this planet. So glad to let people know that there's an answer to health problems. Okay. Um, 1942, actually he wrote it in 1921, but in 1944, John W. Armstrong publishes and releases the book, Water of Love. And in there, now he was not a doctor. So he's John W. Armstrong, not Dr. Armstrong. And he worked with a lot of clients doing urine therapy and he healed blindness and he had clients fasting on urine for 101 days and healed their blindness. So the reason I point that out is so when people come up to you and say, can you do a seven day fast on Orin? Can you do a 21 day fast? I point out the fact that a guy did a 101 day fast. And uh, so don't be shy about doing a week long fast. Mm -hmm. The people who are real sick, they need to get a lot of nourishment in their blood and in their body and get all the toxins out. And that's the fast, the fastest way to heal yourself is stop eating. And you fast, right? Yeah. All right. So you've had direct experience of what the non-eating path is. I guess you'd call it the no food path. <clears throat> and more and more people are, are discovering that even in uh, the mainstream medical communities, they talk about fasting, but they don't go into detail and explanation and, you know, how to prepare for it. They just say, well, you know, there's an ancient spiritual practice. It's called fasting and Jesus fasted and Moses fasted and Buddha fasted. And you may want to try it. And they don't tell you much because they're not trained in health and nutrition in order to get their MD degree. It's like two hours of nutrition. So don't expect that conversation to ever happen in your office. Mm -hmm. All right, what does urine therapy mean or matter for the whole of humanity? Big picture kind of question. Yeah, so uh, I forget what the definition of a panacea is, mm -hmm. but it's a universal elixir that's mm -hmm. been to not only humanity, but animals, plants, basically everything around us. Mm -hmm. It can be utilized for just about everything. And um, yeah, the more people that get in tune with the waters of their body, the the less that everyone will have to rely on the system for just about everything when it comes to medical health problems. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's beneficial to everything. Mm-hmm. So when you say medical health problems, is there some kind of a connection here between medical health problems and a state of happiness? Absolutely. And what would you say the connection is? What's the link? Well, from what we know about uh, our gut microbiome, it's directly correlated to our mental health. And so... The more you purge parasites, 
and strengthen your gut microbiome, feeding it good bacteria and uh, feed it plasma, blood plasma, and purify your plasma and your body's blood. Um, the stronger the connection between your gut and your your heart and your mind, it aligns everything within you. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, you'll just become happier over your overall once you liberate yourself from everything that society has ingrained into us. So gut health is brain health equals happiness. Yeah. When you don't have the chemicals and the toxins disturbing your, your stomach, then you won't have disturbances in the brain. And we found that people who are depressed, schizophrenic, suicidal, uh, had poor gut health. <clears throat> so good answer, good answer. Um, what part, what part, now you can, anytime I'm asking these questions, you're welcome to ask me questions. So we can, we can go both ways here. Yeah. What part, do, what part in working with um, urine therapy, what part does faith play uh, in doing urine therapy? And this is something uh, is good to know when you're working with people that are having uh, major health challenges they're they're feeling desperate and they reach out to you and say well urine therapy help me and then at some point you'll mention faith in the picture and what part does that play yes yeah, so i've seen this uh, article on this study that was done recently where they injected these bunnies with vaccines and i'm not uh advising anybody to get a vaccine of any kind but they injected these bunnies with vaccines and they held them in their arms, were like petting them, caressing them. And since the bunnies were feeling such love and joy, it like had a beneficial effect on the bunnies. So I was just uh, bringing that up. So when you're utilizing urine therapy, if, as long as you believe it's doing something beneficial for you, it's, like, you just have to have it in your mind that it's going to help you with whatever you're looking for it's helped for. Yeah. And... Yeah, it's all just about believing and knowing that it's going to help you. All right, so belief, uh, the belief part of it, the component part of belief is that thought is creative. And if you believe it strong enough and you have a strong intention, those are the results you get. And I love that. I love the example of the bunny. Because <clears throat> faith can transcend a lot of that stuff particularly if you're not dealing with anxiety and fear, then things can happen a lot more simpler or, or a lot more effortlessly, including the healing with uh, urine therapy. Um, can you recall any of the other names, alternative names for urine uh, that was taught in one of the earlier classes? Yeah, there is a uh, Orin, Shivambu, we. We I don't know. there's a lot of different names for it. Whatever. Um P. There's a couple others I can't remember, but yeah. Um well I'll, I'll say a couple here. Um we is the term they use in England. I got to go we. <laughs> <laughs> You're an expression whiz. Gonna take a whiz. Uh it's called Ito in Nigeria. <clears throat> it's called U Juice in Botswana. Uh, this dear sister out there, her name is um, Stampana Osentosi, and she says, well, all the people in her community call it um, you juice. I said, what do you mean you juice? Well, it's, it's you juice. <laughs> oh, your juice, you juice. Okay, got it. Um, Dr. Loda, Cole, excuse me, Dr. Um, Dr. Uh, Rashak Mal Loda out there in India, who's been doing urine th therapy now for 55 years, can you imagine that's a long time. He calls it Loda Cola. And that's his brand. I call it um, OJ or orange juice. So depending on who you talk to, you'll get a different response to people. Yeah. And I laid out a whole bunch of them in the book. So if you want to see, you know, a bunch of the list. <clears throat> How exactly, you might have answered this, but it's just going to go over it one more time. How exactly does urine or Oren benefit the body? And can you name some of the uh, ingredients in Oren, whether it be minerals or vitamins or anything? That's a two-part question. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I would just start off by saying, generalizing that it can help you with whatever you believe it will help with. But some specific things it will help with, um, it will clear the skin. As you were saying earlier, it has beautifying um, effects on the skin and the body, the hair. It can uh, strengthen and remineralize your teeth. Um, it flushes out the cells because it's extremely hydrating. Mm -hmm. um, you can cleanse out your sinuses if you snort it or drink it through your nose. Mm -hmm. You can clear out any mucus in the eyes and the ears. Um, strengthen your, your finger and your toenails. Any of your bones, too. Um, yeah, the list goes on and on. Some of the uh, minerals in Orin, there's choline, there's a bunch of vitamin B, there's uh, so even cholesterol. Mm -hmm. um, I the, I'm not I I'm not extremely positive on this, but there's I feel like there's a lot of calcium and magnesium. There is and nitrogen and potassium. Yeah, there's manganese. There's melatonin, serotonin, oxytocin, DHEA, amino acids. I mean, there's 4,690 elements, which would be more than any one of us could memorize. A lot of them are in uh, their terminology, and they have a long stretch of letters that make these words up. So I, I can't even pronounce most of them, but yeah. Yeah, what she knows is super vitamin, okay, by you, for you. Mm-hmm. Now, how does this play a part when you know the vitamins, the minerals, some of these components? Did you study nutrition? Uh, I was a vegan for a few years. I, I consume a little bit of raw dairy now. Did you but, study? Did you were you a student of nutrition? Uh, not like uh professionally. No, I wasn't like taking any classes. I was just kind of undergoing the bodily mechanical experiments. Okay. The reason I ask that, because if you will spend a little time reviewing those ingredients in the orange, and you get a question from somebody that is related to some of those nutrients, for example, they will say, is, is urine therapy good for stress? Is it good for nervous disorders? Is it good for sleep disorders? Is it good for um, brain um, imbalances and... Um, and the ability to body mobility and, and you go let me think about it what helps people relax magnesium what helps the brain to calm down serotonin or melatonin um what do people use when they need to calm themselves b vitamins magnesium so when you get an, uh, even a basic understanding this uh, how my approach was i knew nutrition because i'd been working at health food stores and teaching this for years and when I was reading through the list, it makes sense when someone says, well, I can't seem to sleep and I da, 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 this is going on. I said, you know, if you go to the store, they'll sell you magnesium. They'll sell you serotonin. They'll sell you melatonin. Your body makes it and they're all perfectly blended together. So drink it. So this is where the understanding of nutrition plays a part, whether you know it or not. Okay. Now, when somebody approaches you, this is something we all need to remember, and even I have to remind myself this. Uh, you approach it like a lay person would approach it, because you're going to talk to people as a lay person, not as a trained MD. We're not certified doctors. We didn't go through medical training. We do not diagnose, make claims, and all that kind of stuff. So a real simple approach when someone says, is it good for diabetes? Is it good for cancer? Is it good for COVID? Is it good for this, that, and the other thing? For some reason, I'm getting these people from Africa want to know about gonorrhea and syphilis and a lot of sexually related disease. No telling what they're doing in those countries, but uh, <laughs> still giving them the same response, uh, the overall approach. Now, when someone comes up to you and says, is it good for all these things? You want to let them know that you don't know that. Just to stay on the safe side, this is a liability issue kind of thing. Just, yeah. The simple answer is I don't know that. I do know that when I drink it and apply it topically and use some of the other various protocols, I feel better. You may want to give it a try.
Do you see what a soft approach that is? Mm -hmm. So people don't look at you as, oh, are you a medical doctor? Let's look at his background. Do you have a profile? So you don't have to even engage people in that. That's a relief. Now, when you get to the point, if you decide to be listed in the Water Family Directory and you got your honorary degree and you decide to go big time like I am and go across the world to get the message and, and the movement moving, uh, people look at you in a different light. So you have to understand you got to talk to them like a fifth grader. Not over their head because uh, that puts you in the classification is rubbing shoulders with the allopathic doctors. And we're not in their world. Thank goodness. <laughs> Knock on wood. All right. Um, any questions so far? No questions yet. No questions yet. They may be brewing in that head of yours. Yeah. What is the body-mind connection or knowledge that will supercharge the effectiveness of practicing urine therapy? How does body-mind connection uh, make a difference when you're approaching, uh, discussing uh, people changing their lifestyle or improving uh, on their health condition at the, at the current moment? Did you understand the question? Yeah, it just goes into what we were talking about belief, really, and how... Uh... Well, belief is part of the equation. Go keep going. Yeah, and I would say um, whatever your body is telling you, you got to listen to what your body is telling you. Mm -hmm. And it'll also have an effect on your belief system. Like once you feel the effects of the Oren therapy, it'll, it'll change your beliefs. Mm-hmm. So, um, so the body mind connection is from that perspective, and then I'm going to move into holistic health. The body mind connection is how the body affects the, the mind affects the body and the body of your emotions can affect your mind. The trouble with most people, and I've fallen into this, uh, pit before you may have as well as you, you live your life a lot from the neck up. And we're thinking about life. We're intellectualizing about things. We're moving life through our, our cognitive interpretation and perception of how we frame uh, our experiences of life when the emotional body is telling you the truth. How are you feeling about this person, that person? How are you feeling about a situation? How are you feeling about your results with the urine therapy that registers a lot more honesty than our mind, which is writing stories and assuming the way things are, which aren't necessarily the truth. We get in a lot of trouble when we assume. That's how it is. Well, you don't know that you're guessing. So that's the body. That's the body mind um, um, connection here. The bigger picture than that. And, and the reason I'm going to bring up this part here is because you're going to get people saying, <clears throat> can it heal cancer, diabetes, herpes? Can it heal COVID? Can it heal Alzheimer's, autism, blah, 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 blah. The list will go on and on and on. And first of all, when someone comes up to you and asks you if you can heal something, the first answer out of your mouth should be, say, it should be yes. It can. And the disclaimer is it may not. And why would I want to talk about a panacea and the possibility that it won't work in the same conversation? It sounds like a contradiction, doesn't it? Well, that was a yes. No? Yes. Okay. Um, I didn't see your head move. Yeah. All right. The reason I pose it that way um, is so people will hear the rest of the the rest of the the rest of the pieces that have to come together to make urine therapy super powerful and effective. Uh, and that is to have a conversation about what's called the four pillars of health or the, or the four foundations of health. <clears throat> Do you know what they are? Uh, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. Bingo. Mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. I was 
start off with that, how to list. But mental, emotional, physical, and, and spiritual means all the ideas and the thoughts and the beliefs and the patterns you have in thinking, right? If they're not brought into a higher state or a more positive state, they have an impact on your health, even when you're doing urine there. The emotional part and the emotional well-being is how well you've been working with your emotions, allowing them to be there when, when they show up and to be able to move through them so they no longer paralyze you, frighten you, or, or cause you to pull away from life. All right. And the physical part is fasting, exercise, massage, tantra, walking out in nature, hugging a tree. Um, these are all physical components. And then the last one is the spiritual part, which depending on who you talk to, Hunter, you may want to you may want to be sensitive how you use words when you're communicating with people. And so some people who, who think the word spiritual or the word God uh, is polarizing to them, I'll just say self-love practices. You understand why I frame it that way? Yeah. So the more and more you talk to people, whether it's on social media or direct in person, you have to learn how to know how their language and their belief systems are running in order to present something that they'll actually take in and listen to you. Otherwise, it's like talking to someone like you're a rocket scientist or a physicist and it goes all way over their head. Yeah, or they just think it's woo-woo. Yeah. And these people are showing up in my life all the time. And I let them know is that's not my field of, of study. I don't know this thing you're talking about. So if you could either make it really simple or understand that I don't understand, we'll get along just fine. Because that's in their world and they talk that way all the time. So they wouldn't think that somebody else wouldn't understand it. I wish them well. Um, can you describe, let's just go over the protocols real quickly. So by the way, we're scheduled, uh, it's, it's, it's 940. What time is it where you are? 11? 12, um, 40. it's almost, it's 141. 141. Okay. All right. We're scheduled to go three hours on this. So, um. So at 10.30, uh, we'll take a, a short break, and then we'll come back, and we'll wrap it up. Um, let's uh, go. Just start, just start naming some of the protocols, and if you can, um, describe their benefits and how the heck do you do them, how to use them, and then I'll help fill in uh, where I can to – because the people are going to watch this after this is published, they missed the whole class. So we're kind of doing a quick uh, review and update so that people can go, wow, I want to take the next class. Mm -hmm. So if you can just start naming some of the top, we call them topical protocols, because when most people approach urine therapy, they think of drinking as the only way to use the water. So can you describe some of the 25 you not have to do all of them, but some of the uh, topical protocols and unit, how to use them and some of the benefits. Yeah, so your feet have um, nerves and veins and just they're connected to your entire body. If you look at a re foot reflexology chart, your feet are they're like a map of your entire body. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you do a foot soak with urine, you soak your feet in urine or orange, you're absorbing all those minerals into your feet, which go out throughout the entire bloodstream, neutralizing or nurturing your entire body just through your feet. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Um, another one is a belly button soak. Hold on, before we go to the belly button soak. Yeah. When, you, when you're using um, a foot soak, most people will either use a Tupperware tub, which is about the size of both your feet made out of soft plastic or hard plastic and you want to be, or they use the collapsible ones which i have they collapse it it folds but they have a lining inside so it's water resistant and you want to put in enough to uh 
at least bring the level above the ankles because the ankles in reflexology, they represent the reproductive organs and anything in the pelvic area. And then the other component is people are going to ask, should I throw it away when I'm done? What would you no. tell me? I would say no. And uh, why? Because anything that you're scared of, like on your feet, that you don't want to uh, reuse because it touched the orn, you just got to know that the orn transmuted all of whatever you're scared of and it's still reusable, it's still beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things that fall off the feet? Yeah, whether well, that be dead skin or whatever it is. It could be dead skin, it could be mud, dirt, gravel, uh, sock lint, whatever it is. Um, what if you want to use it again and you want to and you want to use the tub, you want to put the tub away, but you want to store it again to use it at another time? What's a good way to do that? You just pour it into a jar or whatever is useful to you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I would also suggest you use a funnel and a strainer. So all those particulates uh, don't go into the water again. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And then after you use that three or four or five times, you can use it as often as you want to because it never gets contaminated. At the very end, um, it's a good idea to just put it in your plants or put throw it out on the yard. Yeah. Because it also is great for agricultural use. All right, go on to the belly button. Yeah, so I believe there's about like 12,000 nerve endings in the belly bone or 72,000? Yeah, 72,000. 72,000. So uh, it's similar to the foot soak when you get like a cotton ball and you soak it in orange and you put it in your belly button. It's absorbed by all those nerve endings going throughout your entire body. Okay. And do you know what the belly button is called? Medical terms? I'm not sure, no. I'll spell it so that you'll be able to see it. It's called a pet shoddy. Sounds like an Indian term. Mm -hmm. That T may not be after the E, but it's called a pet shoddy. And so this is great for, it's also good for ner nervous systems. People can't seem to relax. You can just leave that soaked cotton ball in the navel for an hour or go to bed with it and put on a little tape or whatever you have to do. Okay, uh, what's another uh, protocol? Yeah, so those are two topical uses. Um, you could just rub it on any of your skin anywhere. You could soak your hands. You could, uh, what I like to do is uh, just get a jar and put some on my hands or just rub it on my skin. But I also have spray bottles that I use. It makes it a little bit more convenient. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just applying it topically anywhere on your body. Uh, it's really beneficial for the hair from what I've uh, witnessed. Can you name some of the skin conditions it's beneficial for? Psoriasis, eczema. Um, a couple years ago, <clears throat> I was actually suffering from eczema and urine therapy really helps a lot. I was having like bad conditions on my arms and I would rub it on my arms and days later it was basically all gone but the more like i would consume whatever was affecting or um triggering the eczema mm -hmm. it would just come back and i'd have to do the urine therapy all over again so it was kind of a uh, just show me like what do i gotta do to actually fix this and i had to account the root issue you know mm -hmm. so yeah it would be nice if you were able to be aware enough to know exactly at the moment what caused the eczema so you can avoid it yeah it was a a, little, a bit of a, a process figuring it out i had to go through trial and error and you know just keep on experimenting seeing consuming stuff mm -hmm. and i mean deep down I, was, I knew what what was beneficial what wasn't but i i guess i just had to like really get down to it Okay, uh, some other things on that list of skin conditions that uh, urine therapy is good for includes sunburn, 
jellyfish or man of war stings, which you, they already know about here in Hawaii. Um, wasp sting, bee stings, um, hornet stings, poison ivy, poison oak, um, any, any kind of uh, um, infection on the skin, including acne and pimples, which is basically a detox symptom. Everything else seems to be a detox symptom as well. So any, any chance you can put it on your skin. Now you can either massage it on or you could do a compress. Do you understand what a compress is? Yeah, like getting uh, a rag, soaking it on, like taping it to you or just making it tight on your skin. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you could either use a rag or you could use a washcloth or you could use a full out beach towel depending on if you're doing a specific location or an overall uh, compress. Some people actually go to the extent of wrapping themselves in some kind of a mummy-like material. It could be cotton, it could be plastic, so that whatever's soaked in, uh, it has a pressure so it keeps on uh, being delivered inside the skin. And by being wrapped up all the way in the neck, they've also got a, like an, uh, a mummified sauna. You've got the body, the 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 heat and this and uh, raises the temperature. So that also opens up the pores. Um, what about for treating eyes and eye conditions? Yeah, you can get a dropper bottle and you can drop them in your eyes or you can get um, some goggles or eye cuffs. Yeah. All right, have you, do you have eye cuffs? Do you have one? No, I still don't have those yet, but I use eye drop. I just use a drop bottle. Okay. Um, what some people like about the eye cup is that it's shaped perfectly over the eyeball, and they they formed it just right. So create when you put it over your eyes and the orange is inside the cup, you create a suction, and so while it's over your eye, you're going to blink four or five whatever times and keep your eye open the whole time while it's, you know, the water is getting into your eyeballs and, and irises and cornea and all those different areas so that um, it can it can saturate the eyes and then switch eyes and then you're done. Now, goggles, on the other hand, are kind of cool because uh, you can do both eyes at once. There was a guy in India be before uh, I showed up on the scene and started producing um protocol demonstration videos there was these one or two guys from india and this one guy he just had two eye cups he says oh let's just hit them both at once so he had two eye cups he put them both over his eyes and he was teaching all this in his bathroom uh in his home in india right when you first see this kind of stuff particularly people who still have an association of disgust and that kind of response they're going what he's splashing on his face he's putting it in his nose He's putting his feet away. He's drinking from the back of a cow and now a camel. What's with these people? <laughs> but when, you when you've when you done enough research like you and I have, you kind of realize these people got it right. And everybody else in the world is just now getting caught up. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty humbling and amazing to be at this place in our understanding of how our body works so, so we can heal ourselves but also have a, a firm grasp on the subject and enough confidence that you can share that with people uh, and to be able to handle their objections. That's why I always feel like I'm, I'm doing a ministry. This is like we're missionaries. We're missionaries for Shiva. And our job is to bring the good news out to the world that uh, your savior pours through your body every day. Wait a minute, I thought my savior was supposed to be this guy in the Bible or somebody's going to show up in human history. Well, if that was the case, why are you still waiting, guys? <laughs> All right. All right. Another protocol. What about the ears? Yeah, uh, you can do a, a dropper bottle in the ear or you can get one of those little devices that you have a, a oh, yeah. little silicone thing. Mm -hmm. You can just shoot it in your ear. Okay, what is that used for? Uh, you can move. Uh, well, that? it can help treat um, any type of infection you have in your ear, or it could remove any excess buildup of earwax or. Mm -hmm. 
and you after you turn your head to the side and you pour it in like using a dropper or use a syringe or ball whatever it is how long should uh you leave it in there before you turn your head and have it drain out and it could it cause any health problems if you do leave it in there i would say uh you can let your intuition decide on that just experiment with it over time but i don't i don't see it having any like crazy health issues from that no it just it take longer to absorb that's all you know it goes down the eustachian tube bada bim bada boom and it'll eventually get into your body in that pathway okay um how about uh enemas yeah of course how can i forget animals um the yeah, animals are amazing they uh clear out the gut the lower intestine is in the colon and yeah they just replenish the your mucous membrane and alkalize it um just removing a lot of excess waste that you don't need you're just holding on to a lot of stuck stuff and yeah the animals leave you feeling a lot more clear-minded mm -hmm. but for those who don't know what an enema is you get like a syringe or an enema bag mm -hmm with your orange and uh i don't know how to uh, describe it in you a good way tube and you put it up your backside your bum if you're in england and you're either laying on your back or forward in a doggy position all right and then you open up the clamp so that the orange goes through the tube and inside you and you fill up as much as you can until it's so uncomfortable you feel like you got to get up to hit the toilet that's when you close the clamp, pull it out of you, get to the toilet, do what you got to do, and that's it. Cool. Um, people use it for migraine headaches. It's amazing how quickly, if you've got a migraine headache, give yourself an enema. Mm -hmm. And that helps to uh, reset or, or to take, take care of all the nutrients and the talk, not the nutrients, but the toxins that are reabsorbing into the bloodstream and going to the brain. So when you, oh, let me go back to the foot soak. Uh, then I'll go back to it one more time. When you're doing the foot soak and you don't want to put your feet in cold urine, cold orange because it's been left out and it's cold, uh, should you just gr bite the bullet and just go in and take it as is? Or is there some way you can warm it up and it's still effective? You should microwave it. I'm just kidding. Never microwave it. Yeah, what you should do is um, you can fill a bathtub with warm water and you could uh, just leave it in the warm water for a little bit, like in a container, like a jar. Leave the jar of orange in the warm water bathtub. Mm -hmm. Or um, what I was just thinking, you could leave it in the, in the sunlight for a little bit. Mm -hmm. get, it, get it charged up even, you know, with mm -hmm. the sun rays. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's the only things I can think of to heat it up. Okay, that works for a person who's patient. Yeah. Right? The person who knows, all right, I'm not going to do my foot soak or enema. Same thing applies to enema. This is why I thought of them both at the same time. And they have the time to leave it in the sun or to put the jar into the hot bathtub water before it's ready, ready, super ready. The other thing is some people are impatient and they really got to, you know, open up get rid of all that poop that's been stored in their gut uh they'll use tap water they'll just heat up tap water or some people will take the time to put distilled water on the stove and heat it up whatever it takes to get it comfortable is whatever it takes okay yeah that's fair you're saying like mix the the orange with the heated up water yes if you're not if you're not ocd about it you can use hot tap water to put inside the orange because the orange will sterilize whatever's in the tap water that normally people are anxious about. And when you got it, when you're kind of, when you haven't gone, like my mom thought having a bowel movement once a week was normal. That's how my mom was thinking for me, if you don't have one to three a day, something's off. Mm -hmm. And so when people get to that point, Oh, I got to do a colonic or I got to do an enema. And you don't want to wait around for things to warm up in the sun. You just get the tap water and you take care of it.
Okay. Yeah. Okay. The next thing, <clears throat> what is the difference between gargling, urine, pulling, or swishing? Um, I feel like pulling and swishing are kind of in the same category where uh, I prefer to do I prefer to do it with like, evolved oil. Mm -hmm. You just uh, get some in your mouth and you just swish it. And uh, you can either, I, I usually swish like 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Try to, anyways, it, it's kind of a, a jaw workout. But uh, yeah, 15, 20 minutes and you can swallow it or you can spit it out. But what I've learned from you is that it's not necessary to spit it out because neutralizing all the bacteria in your mouth so you can swallow it and it'll still be beneficial mm -hmm. and uh gargling pretty sure everybody knows what gargling is you can just take it back and gargle it yeah gargling is in swishing pretty much the same thing pulling is similar to uh coconut oil pulling mm -hmm. except when they they leave it in their mouth for a while they spit it out but we're not going to do that so um can you explain let's go into looping sip looping and saturation dosing what is looping and what is the difference between this is a question for you hunter what is looping and what is the difference between regular looping and sip looping yeah so looping is just um every time you go pee you just drink it and then you go pee and then you drink it, you go pee and you drink it, you're looping. But then sip looping is every time you go pee, you'll drink a little bit of it and then you'll store the rest of it away. Perfect. For those people who are watching this part of, of the movie, and when he says pee and drink it, what he's really referring to is you collect it first. We're not orangutans. We don't drink out of our own faucet. Not yet. That's advanced yoga. I'm sure you've tried. I don't know. I've not tried that yet. I'm sure somebody out there has figured it out. You can do a back a yoga posture and you can just let it pour in your mouth. So <laughs> that's the advanced American yogi's way of drinking from yourself. <clears throat> so um, sip looping is basically you take a sip of something you've collected all day long and it's like time released uh, nutrition. Um, and looping it will lead you into if you're fasting which I want you to talk about a little bit right now. Um, looping is a natural a part of that because you're going to need to be drinking your orin all day. And can you describe what is orin fasting? What have its benefit? And what has been your direct experience? Uh, <clears throat> orin fasting. Yeah, so orin fasting is just not consuming anything except your orin. Mm-hmm. And I haven't gone undergone any long-term orange fast yet, which I'm looking to dive into here pretty soon. I can feel I'm, I'm almost ready. I mean, I, I'm, pre I'm pretty ready. I should just do it. But um, the benefits I have experienced, because I've done like a few, day, a few days at a time, uh -huh. um, I feel like I've gotten a lot deeper sleep because I'm not really digesting anything. My body's not exerting that energy on digesting food so i can get deeper sleep with more vivid dreams and more connected to my emotions and my water you know because water retains emotion so um but at the same time i don't even need as much sleep it gives me a lot of energy and i feel very clear-minded and just more in tune and connected to myself so that's that's my experience with it so you've done at least a one day or a two day? Yeah. And what did you notice uh, three fourths into the day? Uh, have you noticed that your thoughts didn't land on eating during the day? Yeah, I was so full of urine. It's just, it, I didn't need to eat anything. I was just, um, as I told you before, when I was like looping mm -hmm. to ridiculous amounts where in the middle of the night, I'd wake up like three, four, maybe even more times just to go pee and drink it again, repeat the process over and over. Mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, you don't really, I didn't really crave food. I just wanted to stay in that, that state because it felt really blissful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I noticed that when I'm doing a one day fast or longer that somewhere around five o'clock, it dawns on me. I didn't think about food. I didn't crave food. I didn't go hunt down food. None of that happened. And I still taught a class, did a conference, uh, did some writing, did exercise, went down to the beach and had all this energy to go consistently all day long. And food wasn't there to either participate in or slow down. And you really get an appreciation for people who fast, who's not doing horn fasting because they have an experience of their body performing without requiring anything, particularly nutrients. Yeah, I began fasting before I ever did horn therapy, but yeah, horn definitely helps a lot. Mm -hmm. So uh, think, I have a question. Yeah. So when your body's in autophagy, do you think consuming orange disrupts that process? No. Yeah, that's what I've heard because your body's not digesting it. It's just like absorbing everything. It doesn't have to go through the digestive process when you drink it. It can go directly into the bloodstream. Yeah, that's what I, was I mean, thinking. it's going to go through all the routes it takes to get there. Which is good to know. There's very... There's really no conditions where it's not going to be beneficial and it's not a good idea to use it. People will ask you the question, well, what if I'm on prescription drugs? What if I'm still doing recreational drugs? This, that, and the other thing. Well, <clears throat> do you remember how to answer that when people ask you that? Yeah. Because um, some will say, should I not do urine therapy during that time? So what would you say? Yeah, I'd say uh, try drinking your orange like one to two hours after you take your prescription meds. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so that you're not just reconsuming or uh, I guess uh, mixing the two on like such a deep level. Right, you can actually, um, A, you can continue doing topical during that time. But you can also uh, spread the use of the oral application an hour on either side of the drugs, of the prescribed drugs. So like an hour before, an hour after. And over a period of time, something happens in the body. Something changes in the brain chemistry. And the person gets this aha moment where they realize they can actually wean themselves from prescription drugs and eventually cut loose. Some people have actually gone cold turkey, but that takes someone with real willpower and, and a determination to go, you know what? I'm just going to trust my pee. I'm going to trust that my body's got it right and the doctors don't, and I'm going to go with that. And they guess what happens? It works out just fine. So perhaps a lot of the drugs that people give us are also <clears throat> panaceas. Oh, excuse me, placebos, placebos. Yeah, of course. They got us convincing that's works. Okay, so we talked about fasting, um, tongue depressors, or tongue uh, tongue scrapers, tongue cleaners. What are those? Yes, those are good for removing any bacteria stuck on your tongue. I like to do it like two, three times a day. Mm -hmm. Usually, like right when I wake up and before I go to bed. And uh, I found that helps a lot with just having a clean mouth really mm -hmm. helps a lot. That also, uh, that also, I need to drink some pee. Hold on. That also helps with bad breath. Yeah, for sure. Because bad breath is a, is bacteria in the mouth. So if you want to gargle, swish, pull, and then do the uh, tongue uh, scraper, that'll make a big difference. Yeah. Okay. Have we missed anything? Um, Let's, say, let's look in the book. You can get a, a nebulizer. A nebulizer. Ah, ah, thank you. Thank you. Hold on. I finally got a new one in the mail. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The other one, it broke. Oh, man. I used the other one so much that at one point, the batteries didn't work. It's 
too much use. <laughs> so it's cool. Have you seen one of these handheld nebulizers? Yeah, I got one, remember? Oh, that's right. Okay. So it comes with a mouthpiece here, and you can do several things with it. It either comes with a mouthpiece or it comes with the, oh my God, don't waste it. <laughs> you can either go in your nostrils or in your mouth. You can also uh, gently feather it over your eyes and you can exfoliate your skin. I mean, any one of these protocols is all up to your imagination. Now, what I'm doing a little bit different in my nebulizer is I've got a combination between Evolving Orin and Masterpiece with nice. the marine plasma and the zeolite. So you imagine what kind of powerhouse this water is. Yeah. And they also come with a plastic piece that goes over the nose and mouth for adults and children. So you can actually have a constant vaporized. Now this is called a, Nash a, ne blah, 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 a mesh nebulizer, which means it takes the um, it takes the water and then it makes it into really fine particulates, small enough size that it changes form from liquid into vapor or gas. So um, do you know of any other ways that you can uh, use this? Uh, let's see where I'm going with this. Some, uh, some other things that are similar to nebulizers are diffusers. And diffuser. the, you know what a diffuser is? Yeah. All right, most people use it for what? Uh, making their house smell good with essential oils and whatnot. Bingo. So that little tank that it has, you can fill that with Orin. Mm -hmm. And you could leave it running for six hours. I mean, I've done this before. I'm looking into getting another one. So you can have it running while you sleep. To, so you've got humi humidifying. It's antibacterial, anti-whatever, so that you're recreating sleeping in the womb. Yeah, that's awesome. So that leads me into the last thing we're going to talk about into the protocol, and that's saturation dosing. And if I wasn't thinking about it, it feels like I've been doing so much of the urine therapy practices and protocols all these years. I feel like I'm I'm walking around in in my mom's womb. And so that leads us into the conversation of saturation dosing. Can you explain what it is and why? Is it something that's going to really help accelerate the healing and to prevent things from coming back to harm you? Saturation dosing. Um, can you give me just a little refreshment that I'll go into? I, I forget what that means. Okay, saturation dosing takes the simple, takes the use of oral application and combines it and includes topical applications for so you can have a much broader uh, saturation or uh, uh, delivery of the nutrients into the bloodstream, into the body. Yeah, so the more you drink the orin and the more you apply it topically and utilize these protocols, and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you what's happening with your body, any health problems you're having. For example, when I was talking about my eczema earlier that I was having a couple of years back. Um, the more that I was experimenting with the orange mm -hmm. and um, it was just showing me like, what, what are you consuming this making this happen to you? Mm -hmm. And so I had to make that decision to stop consuming whatever it was that was affecting me like that. And so I feel like that goes for just about every other health problem out there if you're having mental issues or any other sort of physical disease mm -hmm. just get in touch with your waters and your body will start talking to you telling you what you need to cut out or eliminate and what you need to what other protocols of this uh, practice and therapy you need to utilize mm -hmm. so would you say that there is a communication going on that maybe is nonverbal between the water and you? Absolutely. Um, like I said earlier, water, <clears throat> water is in motion. 
there is well, it's energy and energy in motion is emotion mm -hmm. and water retains emotion and so when you consume your own waters you're tapping into your own emotions mm -hmm. and it's just a, a way of communicating with yourself on a cellular level and further mm -hmm. than cellular on what i'll consider to be a, a telepathic level um in terms of what um just communicating with the water like you don't need to i mean you can obviously speak your intentions into the water but the water is going to talk to you on a way that's not just verbal language right and a lot of people hear that hear that communication through desires and images, right all of a sudden you find yourself going somewhere or meeting up with somebody you didn't really think about it, but all of a sudden you guys have intersected and that's why you're supposed to come together or that's why you're supposed to be at this part of your of your town or whatever it is. And ultimately you're living a life where it's spirit guided and you're not trying to manipulate or control your life to make yourself feel secure and okay with things. It's an awesome way to live. I live this way and there's magic happening every day. I mean, I'm out about to go into the library. I've got I've got tons of these stories. I'm about to go to the library, and this guy says, oh, "Can you explain that bumper sticker on your car that says urine therapy does the body good?" So I went into the explanation. I showed him some of my books, um, and he walked off with a business card with meeting a new friend. So you never know. And I wear my shirt around town that says urine therapy does the body good. You never know what kind of Seeds are going to be planted, or what kind of conversations will happen? Yeah, I got your sticker. I've been thinking about where I want to put it. Oh, well, what I highly recommend for you people who don't know what we're talking about is this backwards? No, I can read it. Okay, this slogan, You're in Therapy, does a body good. I own the copyright. I don't know if I mentioned it. Yeah. Um, when the milk industry dropped it, their slogan of milk does a body good in 2006 or whatever it was, it became open to public domain and I grabbed this version of it. So what I would like you and anybody in the world to do is put this slogan on shirts, bumper stickers, buttons, um, hats, whatever you can think of so the message goes out there. Since I, since I own it, it's now my gift to everyone else publicly that they can take it and run with it. And you got my blessing. Wonderful. Woohoo! So um, here's a few more things we didn't discuss. <clears throat> Is it safe and okay to use an adult, a parent, a father, or a mother's orange to treat their children? Absolutely. And why is that? Well, I think it's perfectly okay. I feel it's perfectly okay to use your mother's orange. You were inside of her womb, was, which was a mixture of hers and yours combined. Mm -hmm. And so I don't see it being any different now that you're out of the womb, really. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same with the fathers. It could be a brother. It could be one of the siblings siblings uh it, it could be you see it, for those who haven't seen the the shivamba wisdom chart and if you want one just uh reach out to me and i'll i'll get you one the shivamba one of the one of the key elements of shivamba's wisdom is that it works regardless of your considerations i mean you can have mind talk all over the place it's still going to work and it even goes to work even if it's a man's a woman's a child, an old guy, a sick person, a different race, or a different species. So when it comes to treating your pets, if they have a hip problem, if they've got cataracts in their eyes, if they've got some kind of health issue, a lipoma, they might have some kind of cancer situation, definitely use your orin to either rub it on their fur, Feathers, bellies, 
Uh, you can put it in their water. A uh, friend of mine, she does urine baths all the time, and her dog likes to swim and play and drink the orin when it's in the bath water. So she figured out, just put that in the dog's water bowl. So that's all the dog drinks is her orin. And this is amazing, strong, and very um, psychically connected pit bull with its owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've actually heard about that. Uh, if you have a disobedient dog, you just bathe them in your orin, and then he'll get more in tune with you. Mm -hmm. And he'll listen more. So this is good to know when people say, well, if my child is sick and I can't collect their orin, can I use my orin? Of course you can. Now, one thing that uh, I've been practicing the last three years is drinking the orange of my students. I mean, I, I had a partner during that time who was also into orange therapy and, and we drank each other's orange. Um, and the reason I, I started doing this a little more and more because of uh, the teachings of a colleague, Doc Mike Whitord. And he suggested that if you'll share the orange with another person, you will gain the twice the power of immunity as if you have a second immune system. And from my last conversation with him about a year ago, he said he reports that he's up to 50 different students he drank their aura. And this guy's like an incredibly uh, healthy 78 year old who travels the country doing um, healing practices and wellness practice with his clients. So uh, I'm up to around 15. It's amazing. It all kind of happened by chance. I was just put out my first book and was having gatherings over at my house in Boulder. And we had purification uh, evenings and spiritual teachings uh, and just all kinds of things were taking place. And at one point, one of my students, Gabe, brought his orange in his water bottle and sat it down right next to him. And I said, Gabe, is that what I think it is? He said, yeah, it's my pee. I said, may I have some? And I and I didn't think twice about it. I go, this would be cool. I'm drinking the pee of a 25 year old. It's got to have youth juice in it. <laughs> yeah. So then then I run into Doc Mike Wood toward it, and it was like it changed the whole um, landscape for me in urine therapy, uh, swapping and trading. And he actually came up with a way that you can dry it in a cotton gauze, like one of those um, pads that they cotton ball pads that women use for makeup and stuff taken off he would dry it out in the sun and he called it his urine crackers or his urine wafers and he would wrap it up in a plastic and put it in an envelope and mail it out to people and they would put it in water or their fresh urine and rehydrate it and use it i thought it was brilliant and he wanted me to promote it he thought he was just going to take it all over the world and we we're going to change everything I said, you know what? It's a great idea, but I don't have time or interest, so it's up to you. You go ahead. <laughs> All right, let's see if I miss any of that. So there's children, there's um, pets, night, you know what night sipping is? Night sipping? Night sipping, night loop sipping. Is that where uh, you wake up in the middle of the night and you, you loop it repeatedly? Sip. So in the middle of the night, when you, when you wake up, you just you wake up, take a sip, and then you start the rest. You wake up in the middle of the night, you got to collect, you got to pee, and you collect it, take a sip, put the jar down, go back to bed. And some people like that because then they get more melatonin and they get more nutrients that their body's been asking for all day while they're sleeping. Um, the other thing... <clears throat> The other thing that comes up for people now, in addition to doing the orin uh, enemas, you can also do what's called an implant. Mm -hmm. And an implant is either using a syringe that has like thirty to sixty milliliters, or a one of those soft silicone bulbs that holds two ounces or more that you get in the children's department of a grocery store, and just simply. Oil the tip of it, squeeze it into your bum, and let it absorb all day. 
or some people do an implant before going to bed. And, and when you tell people there, some of them get concerned. Well, what if I leak it out? What if I can't hold it? Well, most of the people will say it's absorbed because it's such a small amount. If you can't hold it, don't worry about it. Get back to the toilet. All right. Um, the last thing we're going to point out here, and then we're going to go into, um, we're going to take a little break here. Please describe for those that are watching here, Hunter, various ways to store the orange and, uh, and explain why it doesn't matter whether you put on some of these materials or screw on the lid. Yeah, my favorite way to store it is just in a mason jar, which well, this one is just a very small one, but I have much bigger ones. Um, I prefer not to use plastic. That's just my preference, but I've seen people use plastic, and but I just prefer not to. I, I like glass. Um, as for covering it, um, that's also a personal preference, but I've been thinking about buying a bunch of cheesecloth so that I can let it breathe. Um, what, is, what is your um, scarf by your ears what is that material made of it's uh, silver this is what is this material it's silver it's from a brand called No Choice Co oh okay all right yeah so protection from EMFs like 5G it's a uh, so I'm like a little Faraday cage right here nice so th is that too thick of material to Uses a cover? No, it's it's super thin, but I just like to wear it. And uh, salt water, um, it can break down silver, so I just don't want any salt water touching the silver material. Cause I have another scarf like this, mm -hmm. and I was I like wore it on my head in the mountains, and I sweated on it, and now it's like all uh, corroded. Okay, it has like, all these stains on it, but. This one still looks pretty clean, so. All right, now, in addition to what Hunter just mentioned about putting on some kind of a cloth over it, there's several cloth options for you. You can use a cheese cloth. You can use a sprouting bag that's made out of either flax or hemp. You could use cotton. You could use hemp. You can use nylon stockings that cost you 50 cents down at the store. I mean, living this Shibambu lifestyle is not going to have you put out a lot of money. It's, it's the least expensive healthcare and, and wellness practices. You could use a coffee filter. If you want to get one of those organic coffee filters that don't have chemicals in it. Or you can put on, like Hunter has there in his. Could you hold up your jar again? Yeah, it's just a, it's just a, a DPA free plastic lid. Yeah, and you just screw on. It's got the threads. Right. And and the reason the reason he can get away with that is because the properties of orange is that nothing can contaminate it. Yeah, I have this other jar that's been aging in my windowsill for a while. And I left the, the lid off of it. And it's a it's a black bottle. It's one of those UV ones so that no light can get in. Mm -hmm. Um, they're called infinity jars mm -hmm. and I left the lid off and I took a sip of it and I felt something in my mouth and I, I picked it out. It was a little fly. Yeah. I was a little bit grossed out, but I just spit them out and I continued to drink it because it was really potent and stuff. Okay. So the only reason you need to cover it is so nothing gets in your water because some people like to leave it by their bedside. They had the belief that, the fumes will help purify the air and still help there, give them benefits. So whether you decide to cover it with a, a material, with a rubber band, or decide to screw on a lid, that's personal choice. There's not one right or wrong way to do storing of orange. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> the whole practice of urine therapy does not come with dogma. And this is unique to our modern world. We're so told the way do things have to be done by the medical community that we forget to think for ourselves and discover things that we weren't taught. And one of them is that there's no rules about using your water, which is way cool. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's an intuitive water. It will guide you. 
it will teach you it will um it will help you to get your strength back so whatever you can do to practice uh the protocols the oral uh topical use <clears throat> um do you do how does it benefit explain the design general treatment right? yeah there's only one benefit that i haven't found in urine therapy like everything else has been just about a cure all but there's one thing that i haven't found that it hasn't solved for me which and is that, uh, bug spray like I, I still get attacked by mosquitoes even when i apply it topically because they're after your blood and you're just applying blood to your skin you know so that's like the only thing I haven't found that works for. Really. You know, that's pretty deep. That's a great, great explanation. I notice when I'm down at the beach and I'm massaging my body from head to toe with the orange, the flies show up. I'm going, why are they attracted to, to orange? It's the blood. Yeah. Because I don't know if they're able to dial in. Oh, yeah, you got some nutrients. I need that. I'm just going to go hang out with humans. <laughs> suck some of their pee in my little uh, fly mouth and I'll be all healthy again. Yeah. Um, so we're going to take, uh, we're going to take a little eight minute break here and then we're going to come back and review uh, how to design general treatments and how can we explain and teach urine therapy to newbies so they can gain a new perspective and an understanding. See, that's some of our work as teachers is to be able to bring urine therapy into a, a an understanding and a perspective that newbies can grab it. They can open up their mind and go, well, maybe I need to know what he knows because he seems to be doing great in his health. I would love to improve mine. So we'll talk about that in ways that you can design treatments for people um, so that they can do that on their own. Eventually they'll learn how to do general treatments for themselves. Sounds good. All right, I'm turning off the recording. Rock and roll here. So welcome back to the urine therapy training course number 15. And uh, before we finish up with the book, here's the question. <clears throat> now someone is treating a certain condition. Doesn't matter what the condition is. And they want to know, what would you suggest? Now, since we're not trained medical doctors, we don't diagnose, we don't make claims, we don't prescribe. But what we do, thanks to Cohen van der Kroon, he, he uses the expression, general treatment suggestions. So, <clears throat> can you give an example? And if you need help, ask me. Some of the, can you name two or three of the protocols you would recommend for any, for one or more of the health conditions somebody might have. Yeah, so I wouldn't prescribe anything, but say if you're having a migraine or a headache, I would suggest that you take an enema. Or if you're having teeth issues, like your teeth are decaying, I would suggest that you evolve some orange and swish it, oil pull with it. And if you have any skin conditions, I would suggest that you apply it topically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, skin conditions are under the... Um, they fall under the, the, um, the category of the liver because the liver uh, is responsible for skin health. So when people are doing um, applications for skin topically, I always suggest them to either do uh, a wash rag compress of some sort over the liver, number one. Number two, do a liver cleanse so that you help, you help the liver as much as you can to take the pressure off the liver if it's inflamed or if it's congested in any way. So you get the gallstones out, you can get the liver up and running again. And also do foot soaks because the liver is on the right side of the foot <clears throat> underneath the second toe. So, or, excuse me, it's on the edge of the, the right the right foot. And so put the right foot at least for treating liver conditions, skin conditions uh, in the foot soak of the urine. Now, by the way, when you mention enema to people, make sure that you're qualifying it, that it's an orin enema. Because if you just drop that word on, they're likely to go, oh, I'll just throw some water in the bag. 
Yeah, but the gold walk is what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, I'm one of the Gemini guys, and now I'm told I'm a Taurus because it's a different astrology. The guy says, oh, no, you're really a Taurus. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Um, so whether it's a skin condition or whether it's an internal organ condition, the same general treatment suggestions apply. And you're going to start noticing if you go through the book and you read, 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 you'll notice that a lot of them have similarities, which protocols are going to be useful there. All right, last question. Got it. For some reason, I'm just craving urine today. Mm. There are days like that where you just I got to keep some around. Do you keep any in your backpack or in your... Do you, do you, do you drive a car? Yeah, my car, I just usually uh, keep an empty jar. And I'll just fill with fresh on the go. Okay. Um, my car is my portable Ivamba spa. So I've got at least one to two quarts in the back inside of a bot in a jar in a box. I've got these little spray bottles for the face and the nose up at the dashboard. Uh, I've got another jar for collecting that sits between the two seats. And oh, I'm good anywhere. And go down the beach. You can just you know have fun with it. Um, so the last thing we want to do here, and I'd like to hear you explain in your own words, Hunter, if, if you could, how do we explain or teach urine therapy or in therapy to newbies so they can gain a, a perspective and an understanding as well as an appreciation, uh, and use of their own water. Yeah. So a good beginner step to take for anybody who's just starting out is just to, maybe fill a jar with some of their fresh orange and stick their finger in it and put it under their tongue, you know? What's the step before that? Apply it topically? No, this is baby steps. These are guys who still have the disgust factor, but they're really paying attention to you because you seem to be determined and pretty certain that this is good and it's not the most ridiculous thing you could ever say. First thing you want to do is have them touch it and notice they didn't get sick or die. Yeah. You want to build a new pathway and create a new association. First thing you want to do is engage their body, mind into it without putting it in their mouth. All right, then take it from there. Yeah, and then that's when you go to utilizing a couple drops under the tongue or... Lick it. Yeah, lick it. First. And then? And then you just work your way up from there from going from little droplets and go up to more drops. You can just keep on working your way up smaller and smaller and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. eventually you'll drink one of these in the sitting. Okay. Um, at what point? Now, you've taken them from drops to droppers. And when you get them to a shot glass, which is an ounce or, or more, at what point you feel they got it, they understand, and you cut them loose? Probably like when they start, uh, just whenever they start experimenting more on their own. After they go to like a shot glass or more, then they're probably going to experiment a little further. They've already got that interest, so. Yeah, you can always check into them and just say, hey, do you know what this is now? Does it make sense to you? Do you, do you understand? Do you got it? And they'll let you know. Yeah, yeah, I can take it from here. You're going great. Let me know the results. Stay in touch. And I like to do that, even though I, there's a whole lot of people I talk to about the subject every day. Uh, it's nice to know that you can be like a, uh, a support structure for people when they're making the transition from illness to health. It's nice to know, and you're going to be, you may already be doing this, Hunter, but it's nice to know at some point you can take a stand for people and they can reach out to you if they still haven't got it or they they get into a tough, a tough time with their health, that they can reach out to you and you can guide them through it and give them a lot more um, inspiration. Uh, what, yeah. do you, what do you say to people? If they, if they give you the standard uh, dumb answer, yeah, I don't have a judgment. If they give you the standard answer as, oh, it's a waste product, 
and something the body is eliminating. What do you, how do you respond to that? Well, I begin to explain the process of the, the liver and the kidney functions and how the liver removes all the waste and then it sends all the golden plasma to the kidneys for extra filtration. And then the body releases it so that it can be used again. Mm -hmm. And I'll also say that uh, I don't feel like your body was created to excrete waste out of the same um, tube that it, it like bursts life out of. It's brilliant. I hope more people think that way. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it that the pelvic area uh, provides birth and uh, everything in the front is, is usable? Everything comes out of the front. And why do they put the poop behind you? <laughs> I mean, the creator knows what, what it's doing. Yeah. There are, no, there are no accidents in this universe. So we're going to take our book here. And uh, we're going to come to our close here, but we're going to start on page 234. Wow, I opened up right to 233. Damn, you're good. <laughs> so the reason this chapter exists is so that people will be able to um, know about and possibly have a desire to study or listen to videos and interviews of some of the, what I call the major Shivambu master teachers and superstars around the planet. And I have had the fortunate to have met, interviewed, or studied with the majority of these people, at least the ones that were speak English and the ones that are still alive. And even the ones that have uh, dropped the body uh, they deserve to be honored because they're the ones who went from generations back to keep the message going to the generations presently and coming up. So I'm just going to name some really quick uh, so that uh, they're honored in this this uh, class today. Uh, Dr. Tal Schaller out in France, Dr. Radshak Mal Loda out there in, in India, uh, Dr. Patel out there, and he's also in India, Dr. Takar in India, Dr. Swaraswati, these are all guys from India. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Michal wrote a book called The Miracles of Urine Therapy. Cohen Vanderkun, which is whose book was my uh, Bible in urine therapy, The Golden Fountain, The Complete Guide to Urine Therapy. He's still teaching, by the way. I think he's in his late 70s. He's, he's still out there in the Netherlands. Uh, Leonard Orr, who, who passed away in 2019, uh, but I brought his book back. It's called The Secrets of You. He's the one. Uh, who wrote about Shiva Kalpa. That's what he, the term he used in his understanding about urine therapy. Andrew Norton Weber, who's got the AquariusWaterBearer.com website. He brought a lot of urine therapy conversations and a lot of conversations about the spilled water and why it is structured perfectly for the human body. So he's somebody worth studying. Dr. Bumi Samola is the guy who was healed by his mom's urine when he was 10 years old. And he's been doing this for 25 years. Uh, George Johnson was the guy who radically went, at, went to public places and wrote Shivambu uh, in the entrance to Yellowstone National Park. He has it on his T-shirts. He has it on his, his car driver's license plate. So he's definitely a loud voice. Dr. David Jubb, he is uh, from Tasmania. And um, when I met him at the Water of Life Symposium in Vegas in 2018, he said publicly he hadn't eaten any solid food in 10 years. So he's a breatharian, big on urine therapy. Um, and these are some other authors, Martha Chrissy, Harold Tichy, John W. Armstrong, Beatrice Barnett, some other people which I didn't write about in the book. I wanted to just mention them anyway. Eric Cassano, he was in Hawaii. I don't know where he's right now. Mike Perry, Kate Stillman, Amanda, Amanda Vollmer, Chitta Senna, Dr. Ed Group, Rodney Leboyer, Lori Ladd, Troy Casey, Christopher Key. He's also known as the vaccine police, that guy. Uh, Kiana and Angel out there in Oahu, Megan McDonald in Canada, Darlene Thehan also in Canada, Katie Kirchy who's in Arkansas. Then you have uh, Doc Mike Whitport. He's been he's now up to 24 years. Harry Matadine, UK. Lee Robert Molson in Portugal. 
Monica, Monica Shute, last time I heard she went from Costa Rica to Germany. She might be in Thailand. She was seen in Thailand with her husband for a little bit. Uh, Denise Mikhail, Michelle, uh, Mr. Marin, Dr. Rosalind Hansen, Casey Kabang, also known as Shivambu. We do Shivambu. That's his uh, his social media name. Allegedly, Dave, Troy Casey, Anthony A.K. King, Sandy Rogers, Stephen Williams, who produced the movie Urinade. And there's some free copies floating around if you ever want to see it. Fabian Farquarian, Sandy Rogers, Stampano Sintasi, she's in Botswana. Lee Sampson in Canada. Shirley of Shirley's Wellness Cafe, she's got lots of testimonials. If you ever need any testimonials from people, direct them to shirleyswellnesscafe.com. There's the link right there. Ruby Cardo, she's out there in Kenya, or she was in Kenya, she's now in the United States. Uh, Dave Phillips, John DePass out there in Toronto, and Brian Justice and Kelly out there in New York. So these people are still, many of them are still public. They're still active. Some of them like Andrew Norton Weber, they dropped out of the public. That doesn't mean they're still around. They're not still around. They're just not being visible right now. And I can understand if you're high profile and you ever get approached by the wrong elements in life, who's threatening you, they may want to drop away. So that's may what happened. That's just my guess. Um, page 239. Any questions or anything you want to say about some of these superstars? You well, I actually do have one question. Yeah. You said that uh, Troy Casey is one of your students, right? Yes. Isn't he consuming like meat and stuff now? Um, I believe he's doing meat. He's also doing free range eggs and raw milk. Mm -hmm. And that works for him. Yeah, I just um, wonder. Yeah. Um, the food trip is something you get to play with. I mean, if, you're, if your frequency is high, uh, you can transcend anything. Also, if your consciousness is at a point, you don't have to reach out to those things. Mm -hmm. I say that because here comes this guy who, who reaches out to me and says, oh, yeah, I'm doing really great. I'm doing nothing but raw meat and urine. Now, in my lifestyle and the way I approach food, that doesn't work for me. But for him and for Troy, that works for them. So it's not a right and wrong situation. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yeah, for sure. The trouble we get into is thinking that we got it right for other people. And we don't know what their their food trip is. We don't know what their life stream is all about or their karma is, whatever it is. So just note it. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, let's go to the future. Let's take the time machine from back to the future. And we're going to go to the future. Now, I originally channeled this back in 2018 with the release of my first book, Healing Water from Within. And this is a little revised version of the future of Shibambu movement in urine therapy. So here we go. Page 239. There is an increasing worldwide interest in becoming an urine therapy teacher. This is resulting in the creation of urine therapy schools educational programs, home study classes, and conferences. Now, as we read this, you're going to discover that from 2018 to 2023, a good percentage of these predictions are already taking place. Our voices are being heard, <clears throat> middle of page 239. The Shibamba movement is growing. There is still so much more work to do as our message is being spread mostly through social media, radio, television shows, and interviews. Now, what I did, I decided to break the paradigm uh, by taking it to the streets. And I'm still doing this in Hawaii. Um, I don't know if you heard about me going to Pearl Street Mall in Boulder. Got a permit from the city. This is, uh, since I'm a nonprofit, I can set up a table and host anything I want to. So I came out with two students. We had signs, books, banners, and one of them was filming. And in four hours on Pearl Street Mall, we had 35 people come to ask questions. Only two were hecklers. 
So that was so historic for me, and I knew it was historic. I posted the, some of the video footage on YouTube. Um, so that's available for anybody who wants to see how that played out. And the reason I did this is because most people think the only way to tell people and communicate about urine therapy is on social media or, or you know, on the Internet. And there's a majority of people, particularly the folks in my generation and, and older generation that are pre-Internet, they're, they're scared of the Internet. So if you decide to go verbal and here in, in, in Kauai, I've got the bumper sticker on the back of my car and I just put on my phone number. So I'm willing to put it out there for helping people out. Uh, every day, more people are taking this message and mission to the streets and to the people who need a miracle. This has been an ongoing, organically growing grassroots movement up until 2023. So you can see from the book, the dates already changed. Mm. Moved by the healing of their own bodies, courageous individuals like you are putting aside concerns and fears and offering a life-saving remedy by telling their friends and loved ones and now strangers about their discovery of autourine therapy. Are you missing these Shibambu warriors? Are you among these Shibambu warriors? As billions of people desperately seek answers to their serious illness and wellness become more disappointed by the medical establishment, it will be up to us to speak up and take action. We need to continue sharing the Shibambu message to all of humanity in any way you can. Let this be the day that world governments and their media tell the people of the world the truth about AUT. Through spreading the education and awareness of AUT, the Shibambu organization we uh, will be producing several urine therapy educational and instructional projects for 23 to 24 to empower everyone in this life-changing practice. And some of these is, have already happened, including two Shibambu retreats uh, last year. Outreach programs, local weather commu community meetings, local water community meetings, which we did in Boulder, support groups, UT teaching and therapy camp centers, are being established right now in Africa, United States, UK, Germany, Australia, and other countries. Shibambo's documentaries, trainings, and research findings will be taught in schools, universities, churches, AA and recovery centers, senior centers, wellness centers, websites, and movie theaters across the world. Did you see the recent movie called Sound of Freedom? Right. Now we need a movie to that caliber about urine there. Yeah, for real. I've seen urinate too. Mm -hmm. It did not make the big screen because they did not have the right connections. Yeah. Or the powers to be that control the media shut it down on purpose. Yeah. So this is why most people uh, would approach the alternative media in order to reach the people who need it. Senior centers. Our tools are making AUT topics engaging for young and old viewers, which is sparking excitement for further study. Uh, we're at the top of 241. With the training and confidence gained by upcoming UT teachers and therapists, many more are able to help their clients in their recovery to restore their health and achieve a better quality of life. We continue to be blessed with countless numbers of Shibambu enthusiasts joining us with their time, talent, and energy, and voices to the movement of all movements. Your devotion to UT practices and compassion for sisters and brothers is greatly appreciated and needed now more than any time in history. The wisdom and ability for all humanity to take self-healing into their own hands is changing the healthcare system on this planet forever. Shivamba is here to bring health freedom to many generations living today and well in the future. Those with questions on how to join Shivambu in its worldwide mission or have any suggestions, donations, proposals, or ideas to further our work, you can reach us through the website shivambu.org. S-H-I-V-A-M-B-H-U dot org for those 
uh, who don't have access to the chat feed. Uh, page 242. All right, if you will, uh, Hunter, uh, keep, take it from here and do some reading. Mm -hmm. Following the Shivambu Trail documentary, we'll travel the world with Brother Sage, assistant and the camera crew spreading the Shivambu message along with Oran Therapy stories and recording inspiring news from people on the streets across the world. Spin-offs will come after this book is published, which will include radio, television, and internet talk shows, interviews, and articles. More respected celebrities will be coming forward and lending their names and reputations by endorsing auto urine therapy for the world to discover this practice for themselves. Shivambu will be producing live stream webinars, teaching urine therapy courses, from Beginner's Urine Therapy 101 through Master Teacher level. They will also be offering Zoom Urine Therapy conference calls with a Q&A format for audience participation. By the way, I've been continuing the Q&A uh, on Fridays <clears throat> all the way up until August. If I have a conflict, I'll, I'll, I'll let people know that. But the next one's coming up this Friday at, uh, golly, what time is it? Nine o'clock on Friday? Hold on, hold the phone. It's Friday from 9 to 1030. Sweet. And anybody is, is, is welcome to come. And sometimes we have Harry Matadine and various other uh, guest speakers show up to handle the questions along with me. So it's a good opportunity to be able to talk to some of your favorite UT teachers and writers that you don't normally have a chance to do that. Awesome. Uh, yeah, go ahead. We will be filming Brother Sage and the Shivambu team hosting tables at popular public gathering places and events. Enjoy watching us presenting and dialoguing with individuals as we introduce auto urine therapy and answer all questions about it. There is a growing interest in becoming an urine therapy teacher in the United States and across the planet. This will result in the creation of urine therapy schools, educational programs, and uncertification. The term uncertification describes oral therapy practitioners who are pre-qualified from years of direct personal experience and results backed by their Shivambu lifestyle and remarkable health. These are all the credentials you will ever need. Urine therapy te teachers will be grandfathered in by their commitment to share this important work. A percentage of the proceeds from fundraisers for the Shivambu organization will go to causes and individuals who make a difference in the world. The purchase of property, housing, and Shivambu headquarters will be established as the purification and retreat center of the Pacific. And that was the vision that drove me to come to Kauai. So we can create an international place for people to uh, work with urine therapy as well as to um, heal anything in the body and design a wellness practice for a lifetime mm -hmm. and a safe relaxing par paradise environment including there's a swimming pool down the street i call the swimming pool but it's a lagoon in a popular beach area called lingate beach and they brought in these giant lava rocks as a barrier reef to block the surf from crashing in uh, affecting the, the families and the kids. And it's a great place to go and either swim or float on your back or snorkel. And it's the perfect place to uh, pair up with people and, and hold them in the water while they surrender to you and breathe. So we're going to be doing that, including that in the uh, retreat. Okay. All right, where are we? The future of auto urine therapy. Okay. The power of autourine therapy gets confirmed by a medically controlled double-blind study. These lab test results will become the gold standard for autourine therapy's acknowledgement as the perfect medicine for humanity. Many peer-reviewed published articles begin appearing on universities and medical websites and in natural healing publications. Shivambu nonprofit organization 
will be blessed with a wealthy philanthropist who not only sponsors the double blind study, they finance all the staff, directors, and projects for Shivambu. This financial source has no economic or political interest in Oren being tested. They will not be motivated by profit from Oren products, which ironically can be pat patented or owned. Since Oren is the, lady, the least controlled substance on earth, it is impossible to derive any monetary profit from it. Therefore, our angel philanthropist invested 100,000 to do the study. The double blind study confirmed that laboratory tests are unnecessary in order to determine which virus is causing an infection and Oren therapy is beneficial for human health. Okay, here's where it gets interesting. <clears throat> Dr. Tom Cowan and other naturopaths have debunked the germ theory. In the last couple of years, they've come out publicly saying that it's a fraud. We don't get sick from airborne viruses and germs. We get it from what we eat, from our biome, from our terrain, from our negative thinking. And so... So people who are doing urine therapy because they think they have a virus may not be why they're really taking it, but because their body is unhealthy is why they're taking it. And they may equate it with something that is uh, threatening their body, and it may not be the case. Mm -hmm. So we're having to rethink uh, what we've been led to believe was true about our body and about medicine. Uh, please continue. <clears throat> As word spreads about auto urine therapy, many laboratory owners and technicians will be out of work. Consequently, the pharmaceutical companies that make antibiotics, as well as pharmacies and stores that sell antibiotics, including health food stores selling natural plant sources of antibiotics, are cutting back on their workforce and may possibly close their businesses because there's no need to use antibiotics anymore. Now, when I was writing this, I was seeing how my brain was going down the rabbit hole. Well, if we get rid of uh, antibiotics from the medical community, um, I'm trying to think of the name of some of those antibiotics. If we get rid of those, that also means then all the antibiotics people take at the health food store, oregano, garlic, basil, frankincense, um, won't be needed any, either. Mm -hmm. You know, and at some point we might start pulling away from health food stores altogether, except for the organic produce and some of the other items. When I go there, I walk through the vitamin section as if I'm examining some archives from another time in our history. I'm going, really? They still make vitamin C? It's a whole different approach to nutrition after being around it for so many years to see it in a different light. Yeah, for real. All right, please continue. <clears throat> Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India declares urine therapy as an acceptable form of self-health care to the entire nation of India. Did that already happen or not yet? No, this is a prediction of the future. He is the current Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. If he drops that on the, on the media and he tells the world that in India urine therapy is totally cool. And he remembers the prime minister back in the sixties who also talked about it on 60 minutes and he came to the United States and did an interview that can impact not only India, but the world, because a lot of people have their eyes on India as the great spiritual center of our planet. So if things come out of there, they think, well, it's spiritually right. And maybe if they're teaching about urine therapy, that would fall into that category as well. Yeah, that's awesome. So, Go for it, India. <laughs> Governments will include urine therapy in the curriculum in all the medical and educational institutions. Hospitals and healthcare providers will provide auto urine therapy as their number one treatment. All states and countries will give official recognition to auto urine therapy. There will be a cooperation and coordination between different healthcare disciplines to assist in overcoming all illnesses and contributing to the happiness, well-being, and health of humanity. 
we become self-reliant as people find out about this basic and natural therapeutic practice, which is safe, sure, simple, and free. This is the gift of life known as Shivambu or Oran Therapy. All right, we're going to stop for a minute, and I want you to examine this picture. There's a man and a woman by a bike doing a toast with appears to be a glass in a stained glass window outside of a restaurant. When you do urine therapy, it takes on a whole other meaning. So I saw that. I'm going, this is how you can actually see two paradigms coexisting or parallel realities coexisting. Because you look at it one way, it's that you think they're drinking beer, and you look at it another way, you're going, they're drinking orin. Mm -hmm. So you can see how there's, and this has always surprised me, Hunter, is we've got eight something billion people on the planet that all have a different interpretation of reality, and somehow we're supposed to get along. I hope we make it. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, let's let's keep going. We'll finish this chapter and then I'll I'll take it from there. Recent reply to a water brother in South Africa at urine therapy training, urine therapy centers in Africa and certification. You can get my previous book, Healing Water from Within, at uh, www.tinyurl.com slash foreign therapy or as a digital color copy direct from me. There are currently no formal training centers in Africa, South Africa. There are a growing number of urine therapy practitioners scattered across Africa. The strong water families in Botswana, Nigeria, and Kenya are working on a urine therapy conference with me as a guest speaker. However, <laughs> as I've written this manual. When COVID, yeah. when COVID hit, they, they, they called it off. Mm -hmm. If COVID hadn't hit, I would have flown to Botswana in 2020. We would have done this. So that's the real reason COVID happened? They didn't want this information out? No, but, you know, all, all theories are good. as <laughs> Put it in the list of theories. Why not? <laughs> However, as I have written this manual, you become self-certified after mastering your therapy protocols and have experienced mentoring and teaching others. With autoimmune therapy, it doesn't matter the name of a disease or a story about it, lab tests or personal beliefs. Shivambu brings healing, miracles, and answers to prayers. Have you heard the expression Zindabad Shivambu? <clears throat> Haven't heard that one yet. I learned this from one of my UT mentors, Indira Gupta. Zindabad is a Hindu word for long live. Zindabad, Shivambu. Mm. Ah. Plasma. Mm. When I go to the beach, I usually take one or two sips of seawater in my mouth. Because I really feel like we're born in water, we're drinking our water, you get to swim in water. You're surrounded by hydrogen and oxygen molecules all day long. It's like we never left the womb. It follows us around our whole life. Some people call it the white light, the pillar of light, the tube of light. Um, and we're always constantly being rehydrated. At one point, I was questioning if dehydration is another scam. Just thought I'd throw that out there because nobody's proven at what point are you so plump and hydrated? When is enough enough? Mm -hmm. Have you ever figured that one out? Because at one point, people just, you can hear them out of their mouth. They go, I feel hydrated. I had a lot of electrolytes and a lot of fluids today. I go, well, how did you come up with that? Well, I don't know. I just made it up. They just decided at one moment, that, yeah, I feel like I got plenty of fluids. All right. So chapter 21. How long is chapter 21? Okay, it's about eight million pages. Chapter 21 is the, the response and the approach to handling a controversial subject like urine therapy. It might still, from some people, consider taboo. Some people might consider it controversial. And so you've got to have a sense of humor when discussing it and being able to <clears throat> respond to people 
who give you that dirty look, or you can feel them, you know, uh, really having a meltdown because you tell them you drink your pee. So you've got to learn to bring some humor into the conversation. Mm-hmm. One second, before we start, I need to grab a phone chart here. Okay, go ahead. I know you have guitars and you're a musician. Do you do? Do you sing? Um, <clears throat> uh, I want to take some singing classes, but I'm not uh, too confident with my abilities just yet. All right, so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta find your voice. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not a trained singer, but every now and then, uh, one of my favorite songs will, will show up on Pandora, and I find myself singing and learning how to match the range and the pitch by getting to understand how to work in and manipulate the muscles in your throat. Yeah. <clears throat> and you can be self-taught. It may take a little bit longer, but yeah. It's the same with musicians who are never taught, but they can pick up a guitar and play it. I wasn't self-taught with drumming, but one day a friend gave me her djembe. I'm going, this totally makes sense. I'm going to take up drumming and just kept practicing. All right, page 247. Humor, as an adjunct, therapeutic adjunct to autourine therapy, does make a difference. Smiling not only increases one's face value, smiling produces endorphins and happy molecules. While dealing with the controversial subject of drinking one's pee and sharing AUT with sick people you wish to help, it will take a sense of humor as well as a sensitivity to earn the acceptance by a prospect and newbie on this UT path. The Piscabulary of Oranisms, which was released last year, was included in the book, Healing Water From Within, along with piss cartoons, pee jokes, celebrities discussing drinking pee, or people singing their pee drinking songs, was for readers to learn how to lighten up when discussing or presenting urine therapy to anyone. Because I can tell you from personal experience, Hunter, when you first just start deciding, yeah, I'm going to tell my friends, my family, a stranger, you start bringing this up in conversation with people, your stuff's going to come up for you. All the feelings of being uncomfortable or being judged or being ridiculed or being disapproved of or being rejected, that's going to come up for you until you get really confident and comfortable with the subject. But until you do, enjoy the process. <laughs> This is where a sense of humor is going to keep you from having a breakdown. And it's also the thing that's kept people from telling other people. Mm -hmm. Not being able to take it a lot more lighter. And they take themselves too serious. You're going to hold back. All right, page 248. Humor and piss puns, piss jokes, produce a temporary shift in the mind in an attempt to take in a new idea particularly one that challenges our perception of reality or beliefs learned from trusted sources. When a person is going through mental gymnastics to be able to understand and integrate this new idea known as the sorting out period, autourine therapy is an idea worth considering. This must sink deeper into the mind until they get it. It's hard to tell what's going on in that picture, but if you could ever zoom in, you could see that. So I'm not even going to go there right now. Humor is the key that opens the mind. It spices. Now, the reason I'm so attracted to humor, because I've been a class clown when I grew up, and it was my way of coping with my family insanity by being the peacekeeper in the family. And then I came across this guy who got to, I got to study with personally and listen to him for years. You might have heard of him. His name is Swami Beyond a Nun. Mm-hmm. That is a pseudonym. That's his stage name. I don't need to mention his real name. But he teaches enlightenment and spiritual education through jokes. So if you ever get a chance, go to YouTube and check out Swami Beyond Ananda. Um, humor, like a powerful laser light, penetrates even the most guarded of minds, allowing new ideas to be planted in a now fertile soil. One pioneer in laughter research claimed it took 10 minutes on a rowing machine for his heart rate to reach the level it would after just one minute of hearty laughter. 
We're talking belly laughs that bring you to tears. That kind of laughter. Shakes through your whole body. It's like an orgasm. The whole body gets involved. Ten minutes of laughter can easily produce two hours of pain-free sleep, as well as a mind that is free from worry. And so can, so can crying. crying. Crying is similar to laughter in another way because it purges you of the, the unstored, unexpressed grief and, and things associated with those tears. So I highly recommend that anybody who's watching this, including you and I, <clears throat> to let your heart break open again and let whatever sadness has been stored in you be released. Wow, did I just say that? Yes, <laughs> let it all out. It has been shown in several studies, we're on page 249, it has been shown in several studies that the ability to laugh raises the level of infection-finding antibodies by the body, as well as boosts the level of immune cells. Your body responds incredibly well to the effects of belly laughs. Orin, especially during looping or SIP looping or all-out looping, increases antibodies, nourishes the nervous system, especially the adrenal glands, normalizes work of blood vessels, and lowers blood pressure. Adding comedy, humor, and laughter reactivates, amplifies, and enhances the body's strength as it brings positive results, positive effects. Regardless of whether laughter actually does improve your health or boosts your energy, it undeniably improves your quality of life. Enjoying laughing is the reason to laugh. Well, why do you laugh? Because I like it. <laughs> it. It frees me from anything that I've taken myself too serious about. And what's fun is to find yourself in the middle of the day observing how insane you've been playing yourself. And that's when good laughter shows up. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pulling the hunter. Oh, there I am again. How silly. And then you can correct your thinking and get back into enjoying your life. Regardless of whether laughter actually does improve your health or boost your energy, it undeniably improves the quality of life. Enjoying laughter is a reason to laugh. Being pissed on is more therapeutic than staying pissed off. I like that. <laughs> you know I had fun writing this book. <laughs> when are you going to write a, a book on urine therapy? Are you ever going to? I'll get around to it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in the works. It's in the water. It's yeah, in, the it's in the water. Cool. All right, page 251. Are we having a magnificent time right now? You're in good hands with your own water. Just trust and flow with it. Hey, if you can't take a joke, you know what to do. Do you ever, do, do people really get that reference? People who say, if you can't get a joke, well, just pee on them. But I, I haven't heard that in, I haven't heard that in open conversation in some time. I've never heard that one. All right, well, maybe I, 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 I don't know. Well, anyway, let's, let's move on. Have you come aboard the Oren wave? Have you come on board the Oren wave before it becomes the big change? Come on in, the water is fine. Either get bu get busy drinking or in, or get busy sinking. Hepinomics, and these are some of the words from the piscabulary of urinism. Hepinomics is what happens when a hemp farmer uses orin in his field. His plants income, his plants and income become enormous. Was it Mary Poppins who sang a verse in her song that said XP Aladocious? Remember that song? The califragilis, the gaspialidocious, even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. Yeah, that one. Simply let the piscabular of urinisms or, res in the, or in resources in this book fill up your joy tank and you will never be piss poor again. <clears throat> Any questions about pee joking? No questions. Um, did you ever sign up with Master P? Yeah, uh, I actually have a bottle on the way right now. Um, if you will screenshot me um, uh, your receipt, your invoice, I want to make sure that the uh, Matt Hazen has that in the system because I didn't see it come through. Uh, I, I sent him an email. I told him that you referred me, so 
I literally, when I was typing on my computer earlier, that's the way what I was doing was ordering a bottle. Okay. If you can send that along with your username, I can make sure he, he gets it in the system properly. All right. I'll do that for you. Right now, they're working out a couple of bugs that everything's got to be perfect because the we haven't even barely got the first wave of affiliates coming through right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're in the middle of page. Oh, okay. We channel. Oh. Oh, we're on page uh, 252. Any questions about humor and joking and having a good time with people about this topic? No, it's pretty self-explanatory. Good. Whether they get it or not, you're going to enjoy yourself. So have some fun with it. All right, we're on page. We're on page 252. And then we're going to finish up with just briefly touching on references testimonials where to find them resources media organizations and then i'm going to read the very last word and we're done all right all right shibambu is a 501 class c3 nonprofit organization and um, it put together the first social media platform that wasn't a social media platform like the big guns of facebook instagram telegram and so forth uh, as the, the last time I checked, we have 1,100 members. It's a free membership-based uh, social media platform, and people like myself are sharing content. They're sharing testimonials. They're sharing jokes and memes, and they're bringing out a lot of research. And, and the thing that really helps is my time has gotten so busy that they've been able to step up and be each other's support structure. You know, a lot of them have been at, like yourself, they've been at it a while, they're comfortable with the topics, uh, and they can help people with their, their challenges using urine therapy and getting healed. So if, did you join? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So anybody who's not joined, you go to shibambu.org, you look for the tab that says Shibambu Hut, and go click on that and get your free membership. Shibambu's mission is this, this is the actual mission on the website is to support and educate individuals in taking responsibility for their personal well-being through the daily practice of auto urine therapy. To tip the tipping point, the increasing cosmic energy or light wave is here. It's visible as a golden light structure known as Shivambu. To reach as many minds as possible, messengers are using their voices and platforms like social media, television, radio, and books. <clears throat> Our last count, there were up to 30 urine therapy groups on Facebook, Instagram, and Telegram. Oh, yeah, there's two on WhatsApp. And one of them is totally, strictly out of India. They're doing really well. The one that came out of nowhere is called Urine Therapy Power. A uh, student of mine, Billy, he started off, and he just started putting it out there. He's up to like 800 members now. That's a Facebook group. So, you know, this is catching on, regardless of... Uh, putting our attention into it. It's, it's a, a very growing movement. On uh, page 253, our efforts to bring Shibambu message to local residents is paying off. When Channel 9 News aired a story in 2019 at one of our urine therapy meetup groups in Colorado at the main Boulder Library, it released an avalanche of attention, discussion, and growing interest in urine therapy. There have not only been over, we're now up to 75,000 views. Last time I checked, it was about a week ago of their story since their TV story aired, but this also spun off to dozens of interviews and stories about urine therapy showing up across our planet. Looks like the Urine Therapy of Colorado meetup group keeps spreading. Our news recent, was recently drawn the attention of Channel 7 News, which was NBC. We got CBS and NBC were both, they both came from Denver to Boulder uh, to interview either our organization uh, or myself. After airing the story, several affiliate news st stations, ESPN, Newsweek, uh, also presented their version. And what happened was, the, you know what the Associated Press is? I do not. It is a news feed that all the, the media channel grabs the news feed and they add it to their story for the night, for the morning, whenever they broadcast the news. So somehow, Channel 7 and Channel 9 plugged it into the news feed, and I was being contacted by CNN, Newsweek, and started noticing that they were, sh they were showing up stories in all these different uh, media outlets. 
That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I get contacted by this guy named John out in China. He, he was in Hong Kong. He heard about it through the news feed. Within a week, Brother Sage was contacted and interviewed on a health show based in China called Sama. Sama One. On One with John. I don't remember his last name. Oh, John's son, Sama. And that interview should be on my YouTube channel. If not, I'll, I can find it for somebody. All responses, positive or negative, continue, page 254, bringing more energy to the sacred mission and message of Shivambu. Shivambu organization has positioned itself as a major education and awareness leader or branch in the Shivambu movement. Some of the work of Shivambu is to bring the education and awareness to local communities. By taking the Shivambu message and mission offline, Many more who do not use the internet or even have a cell phone. I mean, you may know people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, they don't even have a cell phone. And we're so, it's become so normalized for us, it's kind of hard to believe that people are still picking up a phone with a landline. But they do that either that they don't want to, they want, they don't want to switch from analog to digital. And there's, there's some reasons that you may understand that. Uh, but they still have analog phones going around. I can explain to you when we take off the recording. <clears throat> no, I get it. You understand, yeah. It takes Big Brother away from you. One more. Yeah. Okay, cool. Local, local enthusiasts and the local media station create a larger pre presentation of city and state. With regular UT meetings, new people can learn about UT while being in a room with devotees and UT people and gain by experiences and wisdom. We're on the bottom of page 254, last paragraph. These local UT communities will learn how to introduce UT to newbies, become teachers, and promote their groups, the gift of the water of life, in person, online, and with the local media. Having a local support group brings enthusiasm for Shibambu by creating a safe space for folks to open up their UT journey, about their journey, their successes, their failures, and new ideas on making UT presentation. Every water sister and water brother who meets with others forms an unbroken friendship for life. And that has been my experience. I don't know if it's been yours, but every time I meet someone who's in the water family, it's like we immediately love each other. Yeah, that's true. So, and what's a real surrealistic experience, and I hope this happens for you sometime, is like meet me in person or meet somebody you've only known through a social media platform, through a camera, and you meet them in person, it's surreal at first, and then you realize they're real people. We're not AI, we're not digitally enhanced humans, where they were real flesh and blood living souls. So I hope that happens for you. Um, we're on page 250, 255. Will you take a stand with Shibambu in the Shibambu movie? Invite your friends to join us at all at our own alternative social media platform, the Shibambu Hut. Here you can ask questions, you can dialogue with fellow practitioners and post content for members to enjoy. Here at the Hut, you can read articles and watch educational and entertaining UT videos. All Hut members, which are affectionately referred to as Water Family, are encouraged to contribute any content relating to UT topics that are found on the site. Use your writing skills and passion for this precious water to educate others, which furthers the awareness and message of AUT across Earth. Supporting Shibambu financially, energetically, or through collaborating helps with logistics, promotions, productions, public outreach, and day-by-day -day work in building, maintaining, and growing a global humanitarian mission. Now, to be honest with you, there haven't been many donations in the last three years. Every now and then someone shows out of nowhere who might have $1,000 available, and that's only happened like twice. But most people, they'll toss 5 or $10 when they can, if they can. And so with that, we can be able to increase our work on the planet. Mm -hmm. So for those who will watch this playback, they'll go, why is this guy always pitching his nonprofit? Well, that's how nonprofits stay alive, is to talk about it. All right, we're in the finishing up on page 256. 
Bless you for coming home to our water family and especially coming home to you. Let us know today, much water love, Brother Sage. So the next page is references. And since this book came out, <clears throat> there's been more references. There's been more scientific evidence. There's been more documented uh, articles from medically based websites and from government websites that tell you that stem cells in human have great potential for human behavior, human health and well-being. And so there's a few of them that are listed there. Uh, page 258 is talking about testimonials. Uh, if you're looking for testimonials about hand, feet, nails, peoplespharmacy.com has them listed there. Shirley's Wellness Cafe.com has a lot, including pets and urine therapy. Uh, Jay Gadesh Barani. He's got his testimonials. Urinecare.org, Albert Woldridge. Um, there's there's a there's a Google Drive right there. I have to double check that. Is and there's also a publication going around called The Practical Uses of Pete, which I don't have a copy of. Uh, page two fifty nine is resources. So if you want to uh, source out some of these people, here's how to reach them from the hut to Facebook groups. Uh, now, these are some of the urine therapy uh, Facebook groups, the real urine, urine, universal remedy. They got about 7,000 members. I mean, these guys are, are pulling them in. Some have 7,000, some have 700. Uh, I'm, I'm admin to a couple of them that have 3,000. And so it's growing all the time. Um, as these are more the, the Philosopher's Age Stone. That's uh, There's also Alkalize to Realize by our water brother lee robert molson out in portugal and he's got a lot of people joining in adding content to that facebook page maraji desai prime minister of india page 260 dr loda andrew weber uh, rosin hansen manjeshri abanoff dr jub allegedly dave lee sampson denise michelle troy casey kelly ross saba now he's the one who taught uh samuel cohen how to drink through the night if you ever want to know who he is, he's uh, um, Samuel Cohen's um, urine therapy guru. He also brought him in meditation and different yoga practices. And uh, he spent a couple of years at a time with him in, in his home in England uh, and maybe in India as well. So those two are pretty tight together. And then the rest of them follows up on page 261. Authors are on page 262. If you haven't got copies of any of these books, um, if these authors are still alive, this, I have a pet peeve as an author because people are floating around some of my books in PDF file and a lot of the books from these other authors, somebody has uh, black marketed, so to speak, and they have free copies of their PDF files floating around. I, I, would, I would really recommend people support the living authors, mm -hmm. the wives who have survived uh, the authors, because they worked hard, did a lot of research, and they deserve to be valued. So I know some people get in a pinch and they can't afford it, but for the most part, if people could support the authors, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, videos on page 263. Here's some of them that either I've produced or other people produce, and there's ways to go to these uh, websites and see them. Now, this this I don't remember if we put this out in ebook form, so you'll have to just get it in the hard, the paperback version. And that was a picture of the group from the Water of Life Symposium on page 264 uh, that I attended in Las Vegas. And um, right next to me is Dr. David Jubb in the front row. In the back, you can't see it, but I've got the original picture if you ever want to zoom in and, and see who everybody was. These are movers and shakers. Some of them have been at it for years. Some of them, they knew the the founder, Anthony A.K. King, because these are all black musicians, Minnie Kemet and, and various other singers. They got a very highly successful career in, in blues and jazz and hip hop music. And uh, they do urine therapy. And they look great. And their talent is extraordinary. And at the convention, he brought in about six of his his buddies and, and and musician friends, and they entertained us during the convention. And I thought that was great to offer that. Um, so we're going to close with page two sixty five. I'm just going to read the last word from 
from the author, and then we'll we'll wrap it up from there. Since the first release of urine therapy books in 1944, rather than the doubt and criticism one would expect to encounter, there was tens of thousands of people who willingly accepted the information from the books, and that one in particular was uh, Water of Life by Dr. I'm assuming by John W. Armstrong. Thanks to somebody having the love and courage and wisdom to take the time to share UT with others, there are currently, there's a lot more than that, there's close to 500 million uh, Shivambu enthusiasts in 50 nations. Many people, including doctors, are coming forward to talk about their UT experiences or about news stories they've read that talk about using urine medicinally, orally and topically, and in survival situations. After reading over these reports and looking at all of the other many studies on urine therapy, I couldn't help thinking, why didn't anybody ever tell us? Duh, we know now why they didn't tell us. They didn't want to tell us. Keep the Shivambu faith, dear ones. Keep doing an awesome job at spreading the message. Glad we have been blessed with our water family. Amen. So for those who missed the class, the, this is the textbook. Of course, this is the author's copy. Yeah, thank you. That's the textbook for this course, the urine therapy training course. Now, training course number 16 is going to be uh, scheduled and announced sometime soon, maybe in the next 24 hours. And that's good for the folks who missed uh, the first 15. This one's going to be uh, started in next week or the week after. It'll be sometime in July. And uh, then I'll start putting these together once a month up until probably September. Okay, and we're also going to be bringing back the Urine Therapy World Conference calls. We're up to 39 of those. And we've had as many as 45 people share the screen. And some of your most favorite authors have been on the screen from Amanda Vollmer to Veda Austin uh, to Dr. Edward Group, um, Harry Matadine, Matt Senna. A lot of these people have been on these conference calls. And it's time to bring back the band. <laughs> Let's bring everybody back together for a reunion. So as we come to the close, Hunter, uh, do you have any closing remarks uh, you'd like to share about what you learned from the class and what you would like to tell uh, possibly new students coming up, uh, what you uh, think about it? Yeah, I would just like to thank you for this class. I've learned a lot, such as new ways to utilize oral therapy, like protocols, getting more uh, in touch with the lingo and how I can talk up to other people about it, especially new people and beginners. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been really exciting. And I'm uh, very excited to further this work and get it out to more people. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, do you, by any chance, do you have a website or social media um, link you would like to have me add to the description? Or are you on the down low right now? No, I'll, I'll type it in the chat for you right now on my Instagram. Okay. All right. And you want to put your name next to it so that can be a way to people connect with you? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Bingo. There it is. There it is. All right. I'm going to turn off the recording.